late. Yeah, almost done. No, sweetie, it's guys talking. You've been doing this all Just day. Two more minutes. All day. Good night, honey. What? Oh, okay, good night. Good night, Gucci. Hi everyone, it's Mark from MM Rails and welcome to another exciting episode of Community Roundhouse. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have a great show lined up. As you can see in the uh, intro there, I failed miserably at running a marathon train session. I was going for 24 trains in six and a half hours. Alas, didn't make it. You know who did though? Ray Bobel. And he's our special guest tonight. He's going to talk to Vinny, John, and Brian. Also tonight, we have some steamy photos from Shannon Tapia, who redid a whole steam locomotive, renumbered, touched it up, upgraded, weathered, looks fantastic. Also on tonight's show, we have Dale's segment of Jerry and Roy sightings. Apparently they're found in Australia. We have Jerry's segment, measure once, cut twice, a few bloopers. Uncle Wilmer is gonna take us to the past with a blast of the past featuring John Tassillo's layout and my good friend Chris sent us some clips of his new home and plans for a new layout which is very exciting and there's much much more so stay tuned for that again thank you so much for tuning in guys take it away welcome everybody to episode seven of the community roundhouse featuring who John T today's guest is Roy Bobel from the Bobel and Newtown Railroad Fantastic guy, Ray Bobel. He was great to meet with, great to watch and learn about as well. We've got a blast from the past from Wilmer today. What else we got, John? Well, we also got uh, a couple bloopers. Uh, Jerry and Roy have been sighted in Australia. Uh, we've got Another actually uh, quite a bit of, of stuff from Australia this month. And we got some lookbacks. And, uh, and a look ahead this month from Chris at uh, Go Via or Go Home. That's right. He got a new place, got a triple-decker HO layout on the way. We're going to show you the flat blank palette before he gets started, a place where he can jump off from, everybody. We want to thank all those guys from Australia over there for uh, contributing this month as well. That's right. This, this is turning out to be the Australia episode. That's right. We also have look backs from Scott Downey. James author and also some look back from Ray Bobel's latest stuff. That's right. We got some some uh, pretty good clips from Ray. Ray also sent us some pictures which we'll be uh, filtering in during his uh, during his interview. So we got a great action packed episode everybody. It's well balanced. Last one was blue for heavy. This one's balanced. We're glad you're here. Glad you're in chat. Glad you could be with us. Stick around. All right. Why don't we get started with some, some layout photos? Uh, we'll start off with some photos that were sent in by Shannon Tapia from Australia of a steam locomotive that he's repainted, uh, upgraded, and weathered. It is a very pretty locomotive. Shannon is a very accomplished weatherer. And I tell you what, it shows in these photos right here. Thank you for contributing, Shannon. We appreciate you sending them in. This is some excellent work, dude. Yeah, it definitely is.
while we're on layout photos and while we're in Australia, why don't we move over to the AMRA uh, Model Train Club Swan View, which is located somewhere in Western Australia. That's right, y'all know Alley Cat from Back on Track. This is her club. She sent us in some pictures. We want to thank you, Allie. Let's check those out right now, John. Well, the club layout's looking really good, Allie. Uh, you st it looks like you still got some ways to go, but uh, it's making some good progress. Thanks again, guys, for those photos. Send them over from Australia. We do appreciate it. Now we have our own Uncle Wilmer in the house with his blast from the past. See, we decided we were going to do this sequential. We're like a new series. We're going to go blast from the past, look back, interview, look ahead. We had to keep it simpler for us modelers. You know what I'm saying, John? <laughs> That's right. This way nobody gets confused. We'll, we'll go in chronological order. That's right. Jerry suggested that we not put this community roundhouse on one channel because he wanted to keep you guys on your toes. It was it was his idea. He said y'all would get lazy if we did that. So we're going to keep bouncing it around. <laughs> That's right. And as y'all know, last month, Wilmer debuted with his very first blast from the past, did a fantastic job. He did another great job this month with his second blast from the past. Let's tell us a little about it, that John, before we get into it. What did he do? Well, th this month he brings us John Tanzillo's layout from the from the very beginning. We get we get to see uh, a good bit of progression on John's layout. Fantastic! Let's get to it. Hey, everybody! It's time again to go way back, back in the time. And let's get a blast from the past. Let's go back, let's start back on this week's entry into the blast. Uh, let's go back, we'll start off with seven years ago. And when a guy decides to test out his helix and film it, And after all that, the adventure begins. We watched as the layout slowly evolved into something quite magnificent through the years. Video of a pair of Zero Pacific E8s that I just had uh, converted to DCC. And they are going to be bringing in uh, Missouri Pacific train passenger trains from St. Louis into my station that I'm calling for the time being Union Station, which will represent Union Station in Kansas City, as it was probably back in the 1950s. We even get to take a ride once in a while on his train. Close to where it started the last time. 
Coming in on the through train, and then we'll go ahead and stop it up here a little way. Okay, we'll stop the train here. John's layout has evolved into a, an interest for all of us with his 3D structures and uh, his breathtaking scenes that he has on his layout. He's even had it caught the interest of illegal aliens. Yeah, quick update. Um, I've been working on uh, some of the scenery work here and uh, I had just started it and then uh, had to do some, some other things so I got away from it. So I'm um, thinking about maybe uh, maybe running some trains today. There's Sadie with me out here in the, in the building. And uh, there's one of my gnomes. And uh, what I was thinking about doing is running some trains along the, here in the lower level. Oh. What's this? Oh, looks like I won't be running trains today. Looks like, what do we got here? It looks like a crashed UFO with another one sitting by it. I don't see any of the aliens around it, but I'm certainly not going to be able to run trains today till this gets sorted out. So I'll have to get back to you. See you next time. <laughs> John's channel is definitely on the must-see list. If you want to go into his playlist and check out, he's got a big playlist. So check it out. Got everything to fill, the, and he's got everything to fill your model railroad list. DC work, layout updates, uh, 3D printing, and contests, how-tos, adventure, and yes, the illegal aliens are back, and they know a good thing when they see it. Check out John Tanzillo's channel. I, it, it, if he's still there after the UFO attack, <laughs> shake it ever. But uh, yeah, check it out, and uh, I'll see you the next time on Blast from the Past. John, that lad's looking great. I'm um, really looking forward to see where you go with it from here. Tell you what, fantastic choice again, Uncle Wilmer. We really appreciate you. The blast from the past thing is great. It's so great to revive some of this old stuff to see where some of us have come. All right. Well, why don't we uh, move over to our, our look back se segment? Uh, this month, Brian put together uh, a collection of some really nice lookbacks. Why don't you tell us about it, Brian? That's right. We started with Wilmer looking way back uh, about a year ago, and now I'm looking back just a month or so ago. This guy's name's James Arthur. He made a fantastic project showing us how to make coal loads for our hopper cars. What do you think, John? I've never seen uh, this technique before. He uses uh, charcoal briquettes. And it's a and it's a pretty effective uh, pretty effective coal load. Yeah, this guy uses a combination of pink foam and crushed charcoal with some of our normal model railroad adhesive, and puts out a great product. I'll show you right now. Uh, show you guys what I'm working on uh, is that coal load that you see there. 
um, some other guys who kind of combining some methods I've seen done elsewhere. Um, but what that is, is a, it's a block of foam that's cut to fit in the hopper car and then sanded into the shape of a, of, of you know, the, the top of a mound of coal. And then what I did was I took uh, just regular charcoal briquettes and I put them in a bag and I bashed them with a hammer down to the size of small rocks, you know, small pebbles of it. And then put that in a old blender that I have for that kind of thing. Uh, pulsed it till it was almost a powder and then sifted it. And so, um, so I, you can see the mark I made there uh, around the top of the car. So we'll just take that out and lay it on its side like this. And the next thing you want to do is that's, that would be way too high of a stack. Um, and I'm using foam that's a little too thick. So the next thing you want to do is come just a little bit above that line, right about there, and cut the top off. And I'm uh, demonstrating the technique. Um, but then what you do from here is you bevel this edge. So you kind of come in like that, and you use the line that was the top of the car as your guide to mark the, the top, the side of the pile. And then you just sort of angle it up. You do that on this side, you do it on the other side like that, and then come back on the ends like that on both sides. And you'll end up with a kind of a, you know, a bit of a, almost looks like an ingot, like where the, the sides all slope down and they're sloping down to the mark that you made that shows where the top of the car was. Then you sand it and you get something that looks like this. This needs to be painted with, with black paint, just flat black or whatever you have, dark black paint. And, uh, and let that dry. And then you just brush on straight white glue. And what I did from there is once the white glue was on there and a little bit tacky, I just turn around and I dip it right in that uh, bucket of, you know, coal that I made. And bring it out, let it sit, let that dry. And it looked fantastic stuff. So the last thing I did, once the white glue was dry, was just hit it with the normal, you know, diluted, uh, this is probably, oh, I don't know, 25% glue, 75% water, and a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol mixed in for good measure. And I just took that and I drizzled it all over it. Once once the undercoat of glue was dry, drizzle that all over it and then brush that on and smooth it out and then just let it sit. And once I did that, just like ballast or anything else, it's now sealed. It still looks good. It's not doesn't quite have the definition it did, but it's still pretty good. And I can do that, and it doesn't make my finger black. So I just wanted to share with you guys what I was working on. And All right, well, besides, uh, besides the coal loads, we also have uh, a clip here from Scott Downey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Brian? Yeah, this guy put together a kit or two or six or 12 or 15 or 20. He's got a garbage bag this big of just the plastic stuff left over. What are those called, John? Uh, sprues. Sprues. He's got a plastic uh, outside 33-gallon garbage bag full of sprues. <laughs> Not joking. Check this video out, everybody. And the kits are fantastic. Guy to get a good job. Most of them are Walters, I think. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Hey guys, it's Scott here again at uh, Watermass Railroad. Thought I'd just give you a little more, a little more, yeah. Just a update on what I've been doing. Still just basically building uh, kits and finishing off some. Um, I painted the uh, Vulcan uh, crane shed storage area. Uh, I got this uh, Krylon pebble, I guess that's stone finish stuff. And I found it in kind of a charcoalish color. I also built the uh, rotary dumper. That sounds better. Um, haven't painted it yet, but it's built. Not sure. And I've also been working on the uh, warehouse uh, a little bit more. Two other buildings I've built are the uh, the boiler for the uh, paper mill and the um, craft. Uh, Built mill on this uh, pile refinery. Surprising, I haven't uh, thrown it in the garbage yet. 
I've also put together the uh, highway motel. This one here is the pre-built from Walters. I got it cheap. That's why I ended up buying it. But as far as the kit, um, yeah, I painted, painted all of it with the uh, black charcoal stone color on the roof. Is I have finally finished the, uh, oh, reach over here, the uh, roll buildings. So anyway, guys, we'll talk to you later. They really are good, too. Yeah, they are. And the, the last clip that we have here is is a guy having a lot of fun with his layout. This is uh, quite an obsession that, that Ray Bubble had. I tell you what, I sure agree. This guy has a love for modeling and a special love for his brand new layout or how he puts it, his dream coming to reality. And I agree, he's doing a fantastic job. I like for us to look back at the guy's stuff before we bring him in for the interview. So let's check out this guy, Ray Bobell. Let's see what kind of work he's done in case you don't know it before we bring him in and talk with him live. Evening, gentlemen. Jason, Santa Fe Bob. Welcome aboard. Oh, it's the same old, same old. Just another Sunday hanging out with Ray. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> and I'm sure you've probably figured it out by now, but I think I'm a, I'm a Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Ohio, Chesapeake, Ohio, Western Maryland, uh, among among others. <laughs> cool. And I got this when I was um when it was it uh it was up when I went to Horseshoe Curve last year with uh, Sparky and the gang. What was that? Um, that was in middle of May last year. We went out to Steamtown and then we left Steamtown and took the three hour drive down the down to the horseshoe curve and I took another three hour drive home from there. <laughs> Any locomotives that I was still looking for. And I have one Pennsylvania locomotive that I'd love to get my hands on, but I don't think I'll ever I'll I don't think I'll ever be able to get a hold of it. And that one uh was the Pennsylvania GG1 that they nicknamed the Blackjack. Um, and anybody who's familiar with the Pennsylvania Railroad and the GG1s, uh, the reason why Blackjack, believe it or not, before uh, Penn Central and uh, Amtrak took over, uh, Blackjack was the only GG1 that was painted black. And the reason being is the numbers for that particular locomotive added up to 21. So that's that that one of these days I'm gonna own a replica of Blackjack. So but good evening, YouTube model railroader fans, model railroading live fans, budget model railroaders, mod, Maryland area model railroaders, and whoever else happens to wonder watch this wonderful brand of nuttiness that I've been bringing to the table every week so far this year. You know, this is not a single man operation. This is nowhere near a single person operation, and I knew it. Um, however, was the last six and a half hours of messing with this thing a blast? Absolutely. Um, you want to talk about seeing a vision come to life, even with its idiosyncrasies, the issues that I've come across, and I've come across a few. Um, I think I'm actually going to wait until the next vlog to kind of go over the things that I've found. Um, but <clears throat> ultimately, at the end of the day, this thing is absolutely unfreaking believable. I mean, it, it really is unbelievable. This, this, this is a dream right here. This is an absolute dream. And yeah, like I said, I, I've got issues. I've got things I have to fix. I've, I've found some things that I'm not happy with. Um, and it's it's mainly mainly because of the fact that the track and the, and the sub road bed aren't, aren't down yet. In six and a half hours, we're talking 24 trains in both directions. 
um, to give you an idea as to what that schedule looks like. It's 24 trains, 12 passenger trains uh, and, and 12 freight trains is, is what it boils down to. Um, so where, what's the next step, right? Well, the next step is to fix the issues, um, try and correct what I can correct now, obviously, because once I go ahead and start putting down the the final roadbed and actually putting this into place, there are going to be some things that I'm going to be fixing at that point. I am I'm freaking over the moon. <laughs> it, it may not seem like it because I'm freaking beat. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is flat awesome. <laughs> That'll be next time. So you all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. See ya. Well, that was six and a half hours of obsession, and you can see how excited Ray was that it that it all went well. He needs Jack Jack and him together, I think. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't be his partner running that thing, but I think Jack Jack might could handle it. Yeah, him and Ray could probably do a good job with it. And so now, without further ado, the man of the hour, Cousin Vinny. No, I'm just joking. Ray Bobell. No, I'm just joking. It's both of them, Cousin Vinny and Ray Bobell. Welcome them both for the live interview, everybody. That's right. Let's, let's bring Vinny out here, and we'll have a chat with Ray. Ray Bobell, everybody. Great guy. Meet with him right now. So I've been cutting, so I feel like I know you because I've been back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> for you. And I tell you what, the fireplace in your train room, I am so jealous. My gosh. <laughs> well, if, if it actually worked, it would be even nicer, I guess. <laughs> it's, 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 that is an unoperable fireplace. Um, when we... When we bought the house last year, we had we had a company come out and take a look at them because this one here actually leaves the one on the first floor, and the the flue between this one and the one on the first floor is completely shot, and the one from the first floor going out is about seventy five percent shot. So, the um, they they basically said don't don't try to burn anything in there, and then we we're like, well, we eventually. Well, here's the other thing. My wife, she can't be around burning wood. It messes with her sinuses too much. So that really didn't concern us. But eventually, I think we're going to get these converted over to uh, gas or pellet. Now, Ray, are you mobile right now? Or are you on a webcam? Could you get up and show us the layout? Or are you tied down? I could. Well, I can show you, I can show you a bit of it. But it, I, I'm slightly I'm, I'm tethered. I'm on, the, uh, I'm on a webcam. Or do you have a uh, a picture, a graphic of your layout that you could share? You know, that is one thing that I did not. And I didn't okay think you about doing. Yeah, I, I've got one, but it's not as easy to get a hold of. It's actually on an old Windows uh, ME machine. Actually, it's a Windows XP machine um, that's not tied to the net. Um, I actually did my design in a program called um, uh, Microsoft Visio, uh, which is an engineering program. It's more or less designed for doing electrical and electronic design and um, office design. Um, and I just kind of modified that program to do what I wanted to with, you know, with the railroad. And that, that was my base design. And then, of course, I was going to go ahead and transfer it to paper. But... I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I never, I never got around to actually transferring it to paper. I went ahead and just jumped right in. And you know, it, it I know was a little bit about that. The thing was, was get the four lines down, and then I started working on the siding, and the yards, and now that's all done. And you know, I've, I've run, I've run two phases of the schedule, and I'm going to go ahead and run probably two or three more before I am actually going to feel fairly comfortable with what I've got and I'll go ahead and start really setting things in stone. 
But right now, everything is still kind of movable. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was telling everybody in my video this morning. I said, yeah, it's not like what you see now is not worth what it's turning out to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times this area behind me has changed since I put this thing together. It's like every week or two, it just, it, everything comes <laughs> off, pick up the tracks, start over. <laughs> <laughs> I do have those pictures that you sent me, Roy. Uh, Ray, uh, if you want okay. to uh, talk about them, I can, I can put them up on the screen. That'll work. All right. That'll work. So this picture is actually, the white area will eventually be uh, what I call Newton's Farm. Um, and that's the that's actually the town of New will be the town of Newtown as well. But that's the north end of the layout. Uh, to the left, you can see the uh, hidden yard of Richmond, and of course, over to the right, that's my uh, home office at the moment since we've been working from home since March. <laughs> right. But, um, you can barely see in the background here, though. You got like I said on the back side, on the left side, you've got the hidden yard of Richmond. And then just above that is the hidden yard for Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, the actual railroad is named the Beauville and Newtown, but it's a bridge route between Harrisburg and Richmond. So with that schedule that I was telling you all about, you know, where I've got, where I've been running about 20, I said it's 24 trains, but it's actually a little bit more than that. Um, it, wow. A lot of it is is through freight from Richmond to Harrisburg or Harrisburg to Richmond with passenger traffic for it in between. Um, there are three local trains that either terminate or start at um, the Beauville Yard, which we'll get to in a, in a later picture. But it's hard to believe that, uh, well, <clears throat> the first thing is, is this layout is really recycled from the 13 foot by 11 foot layout that I had for, from the last uh, 17 years. Actually, more than that. that, was that, that actually, your house? The old one, I think, was like 20 some years old. Right? That so that's one of the reasons why I was able to get as far as I was so quick. Is that it, and a lot of the stuff that I had on that, I reused on this. Okay, because you made some pretty quick progress on this one. Yeah, and that was that was the biggest attribute was the fact that the old layout, and of course, you know, underneath it here, you can barely you can kind of see it. The L girders were repurposed from the old layout. Actually, showing the pictures isn't working all that well. Um, I'm, you still not got able, able, I'm not able to switch back and forth too good. Yeah, so I we'll, see the first one still. Uh, oh, I yeah, guess because I, I think... We should be back to, to the four of us. No. <laughs> wow. I still have a picture, yeah. Yeah, I still see Ray's layout. See, Ray, you want to dominate the show. <laughs> you mentioned 24 trains in six and a half hours. How often do you do that? Well, I've only done it. Well, the reality is uh, I've only done it twice. Um, and actually, the first uh, the first round, I didn't have everything running that I've got now. Uh, I was actually two passenger trains short. So that one, that first schedule only had the 10, only had 10 passenger trains. And I don't think I ran the full the full gamut of the freight trains either because there were some things that i added in later um so the first the first phase uh testing i think only ran about maybe maybe 18 trains total and that one there that schedule i think i got done to like four or four and a half hours um i have yet to actually go through and try and do this in one sitting um which would be something that I, I'd like to try and do, but obviously I would need there, I uh, need a, uh, at least a half a day to do it. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that I mentioned too, the thing it took takes the longest is the fact that by yourself, you have to take care of the, the local yard, Beauville yard, you have to run the industrial, and then you also do all the switching at the two hidden yards. Because those, even though there's four storage tracks on each, so there's eight storage tracks back there, there's not enough room to keep everything on top of the layout. So there's actually a drawer underneath with boxes with all the rolling stock sitting in it. Then um, the locomotives are stored on a shelf, and the passenger cars are actually stored uh, down below. So they're actually, the passenger cars are at layout level, the locomotives are up top, and the, and the normal, the rest of the rolling stock is underneath. 
that was the only way that I could that was the only way that I could do this at the moment. I've got a, I've got some things I've got to work on back there. I had actually uh, some older um, drawer stuff that I had used, and it's not roller bearing. It's just slide, and it sticks something fierce, and that drawer just doesn't like to come. There's the one drawer that I've got underneath it, or doesn't like to come out. So it's it's a bit of a pain. You gotta really you gotta really tug on it to get it out from underneath the way out. Be able to do what you want to do, and then push everything back. Right. How, how big yeah. is your layout, right? All right. Down the back side, um, if if you were looking at the first picture, down the back side is 36 feet. Uh, the city of Beauville occupies a uh, occupies an area that's eight feet by five and a half feet. The bridge that ties this section that I'm sitting in front of and the other section together is only 15 inches wide. That section there is, I think, 16 feet long. And then this section behind me up here is, I think, uh, three feet deep. And then it's, it's a couple of five foot sections, or there are actually four foot sections. So it's four, four, eight, 12, and then a two foot section on the end. So that's 14 feet back here. Oh, across the front side. It's, it's a large, it's a large layout. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm drooling. And so you said your DC, <laughs> my, my question is, are you are you ever going to consider DCC? <sighs> you know, um, there's been a few people that have tried to twist my arm, Vinny included. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and, and, the answer is, and the short answer is eventually. Um, right now, I'm not exactly in a position where I could consider it. Um, the reason being is that we just bought the house last year. That's number one. Uh, number two is my daughter is going to be a senior in college this fall, so I'm still dealing with that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's, and a lot of the stuff that I run on here, and anybody, and of course everybody that follows me knows, there is a lot of stuff that I run that is pre, there, there's no way it could ever be considered or converted to DCC. We're talking old AHM, Bachman, and Lifelike. Okay. Um, some of the some of the stuff, the Atherin stuff, I know the old Atherin blue box that I have. Yes, I know that could be converted fairly easily. Uh, I've seen it done. Um, you know, one of the Dream Plan Build video series uh, that Model Railroader did a few quite a few years back. They talked about being able to upgrade uh, an Atherin blue box from uh, from DC to DCC. Um, so I kind of know how that works. Um, but it, like I said, some of this, some of this equipment on here dates back to the back to the 50s and 60s and early 70s, and that stuff just isn't isn't worth isn't worth converting. No, it's not practical. No, it's not. I want to make sure you tell us about blackjack before we run out of time. Blackjack. Oh, the uh, the Pennsylvania GG1. Um, that its number equals out to 21. <laughs> and I'm no longer the mess that you do think I'd remember which which, which number it is. <laughs> uh, I believe it's 49. That's 13. Come on, right? <laughs> yeah. 49, 35. Yeah. 13 and 8. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never knew that. That's good information. <laughs> That's funny. And, and is this loco in HO difficult to locate and find or just something you haven't had a chance to get yet? I know it's something you're wanting is why I was asking. Yeah, it, Blackjack, just because of what it is, um, you know, it was, I've always, <laughs> I've always been a fan of the Eastern, of the Eastern Railroads, specifically the Chesapeake and Ohio, the Baltimore and Ohio, the Western Maryland, the Pennsylvania. Um, I've kind of expanded that a little bit. Uh, going into, you know, the Delaware and Hudson and the New Haven. Um, um, I've actually, if anybody uh, knows about the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, um, they're in New England, Berkshire, and Western. 
I actually, off of eBay a couple of years ago, actually it's been quite a few years ago, picked up an F unit that's painted up in the New England Burger Burn Western uh, paint scheme. Um, I've got a seaboard locomotive. Uh, I've got the Delaware and Hudson. I've got the Florida East Coast. The main, most of the stuff that I run, uh, Virginian, Norfolk and Western, most of the stuff that I run is specifically Eastern Co East Coast railroads. Um, and I've always been fascinated by the GG1s, just the, just the size of the things, um, you know, the, and how they work. When you talk about the GG1, specifically the Blackjack, um, that one there, just because of its history, that's one of the ones that I'd, I'd really like to have. Are they hard to find? Yes. Um, there weren't too many companies that made them, and I think the only ones that that really had a lot of them were the companies that were brass, which means that you're going to pay a pretty penny for them. Sure. Um, and that's that's been my my conundrum. It's like I I've almost gotten to the point where I'd almost like to go out and find another one of these uh, Mahino Model Masters, the 4M, like I've got, and just strip the paint off of it, paint it black, and put 40, 4980 or 4935 on the side of it. Sure. <laughs> you know, but you know, I that that's that's just one of those things. It's like, <clears throat> you know, if I found one tomorrow at a good price, it'd be like, you know, I'd grab it up. Right. Um, but it's I I actually saw one at a train show. Uh, what was it? Two years ago, it was in Brass, and they wanted like seven hundred and fifty dollars for it. Wow! If you actually follow me, that GG one, the motor burned up on it, which was a funny story. Here it is. After running my schedule, I found another AHM locomotive that had a problem, and lo and behold, that one actually had the same motor in it that the GG one had in it. Well, I could care less about having another F unit. I wanted my GG one back, so I did a train. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled the motor out of that F unit, stuck in the GG1, and go, yep, victory, we're good. Before we go, before we cut you loose, I wanted to ask one more thing. You mentioned that you learned some stuff, and you were going to tell us about that in your next blog. Can we have a sneak peek of some of the things that you learned, some things you're going to change or redo? Oh, um, yeah, actually, the stuff that's coming up, I actually, um, the turntable, um, in the last blog, it was talking. I was talking about the fact that it was skipping. It was getting stuck. Right. Um, I actually, I actually found two problems with it. Uh, the first one was is the fact that I probably should have had a brace up underneath of it, so that way when an engine sat on that turntable, it didn't try to buckle it. That okay. was what was happening. Those locomotives were just heavy enough that with that lip, it was actually folding in on itself. So I put a a two by four underneath right underneath the center of it to kind of hold the center in place i had an issue in the uh local yard the beauville yard uh that um actually ended up being a bad connection i got that straightened out and then like i said i went through here and and redid um redid the white industrial area to where it's you know i've got a gravel dealer i'll have a scrap dealer I've got a team track, and then the maintenance of way equipment got moved from the yard up to here, um, just so I could go ahead and have a little bit more room down in the yard to be able to do some of the things that I wanted to do down there. We sure do appreciate uh, you, Ray. Uh, yeah, not uh, a uh, assuming that the technological gods are with us, it will air as a premiere on Cousin ben or Denny's channel an hour before Sparky on Wednesday the 8th. And okay. uh, did you have any other questions for us or anything? We sure appreciate your time, man. Hey, not a problem. I appreciate not a problem at all. I appreciate it. I appreciate being uh, being brought into the into the fold here. And you know, I've been on a couple of different live streams. I've been in, I've actually you know when the YouTube model builders was around, I actually had um, I had an article in the EMAG, and and now this, of course, doing my own stream and doing my own thing. It's like this is just great. This this. This community is just is just awesome. I mean, it is it, it it you know doing the meet and greets and things of that nature, and then being able to do these things is is just awesome. You know, this is really cool. Oh, it, it's a fun community. It really is. Yep, it absolutely is. Yeah. You gotta watch out for that. Well, you know. <laughs> 
model railroading brings a lot of people into the community, but the community brings people further into model railroading too, because I would have never have gotten the as into it had it not been for you guys. I might have put some models together and had a good time, but would have never gotten into it like this had it not been you guys showing me how cool it can be and the possibilities, you know? You know, and it's, it's funny too, because I was telling my wife about it the other day. I said, you know, I said, it's funny. I said, you always think that there's probably other people because you go to train shows and you see everybody that shows up there and you're like, well, there's got to be other model railroaders in the area besides myself. And, you know, here it is doing these live streams and then catching other folks' live streams. I'm finding out there's like five or six guys within about two hours of me that have railroads. And it's like, well, this is great. You know, Georgia Sunbelt is one of them. Hot Rod Rodney's two hours to the west of me. And there's another fellow that just started... I think he just started showing up in the live streams within the last two months, and that's Joe Raider. Oh, yeah. You know, it, 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 and it's, it's like, you know, we're all within a few miles. It's like, this is great. You know, eventually once things you gotta think up, about it, Ray, those are the ones that, those are just the ones we've tapped into yet. Sure. Yeah, yeah they've exactly. Got to be more sure, there's, there's there. more they than that. You, you, you think about it. You think that only the people in Mississippi or the people in Pennsylvania or the people here in Arizona are seeing this. No, the whole world is seeing what you're doing, seeing sure. what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just like with Anthony, it's just like with Anthony Dodge now, too, the model railroad outsider. Yeah. You know, him talking about, you know, he, with because of the fact that he's modeling Markland, you know, he would think that he would be watching a lot of the German videos, but there, he's not. He's watching a lot of the English videos because it's just, it's not so much the communication gap; it's just the the way that they 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 do things over. There. And it's he's like, I'd rather watch this or watch that. And so, so, you know, you can pick and choose. It's, that's the other thing is the fact that we can sit here. If there was somebody interesting, you know, one of us is sit there and throws up a live stream. We can sit there and watch it. If that's not your thing that night, you can go and watch somebody else. You know, it's it's you got a lot of leeway out there now. Yeah. 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 And it's great to have at least, you know, one of us going on each night so we can get together in the evenings if we're available. You know, um, I, have a, I have a pretty consistent schedule for now. I have a daughter, though. That's going to change. But so I, I have certain live streams that I can hit every week and I come to enjoy them, you know, and um, it's nice. But, yeah, guys, I really appreciate you bringing me in on this. This was really cool. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you being here, right? It was a lot of fun having you. You're, you're, you're definitely a fun guy. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, look forward to hanging out with you more, man. People watch what I do. It isn't so much for what I do, it's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, like Ryan problem. said, this should be up Wednesday night on Vinny's channel. Sounds like a winner. Thank Happy you very much, July. Thanks, All Ray. Right. Well, Ray, thanks a lot. It was uh, a lot of fun getting to, to chat with you. You're definitely a fun guy. And uh, we hope to have you back here again sometime. And if you take nothing out of this, remember, gift idea, Ray Bobell, Blackjack. Don't forget it, everybody. Thank you, Ray. We really do appreciate your time. Fantastic getting to know you. He's a great guy, everybody. And so if you hadn't met Ray already, we go on over there, subscribe to his channel, click the bell icon. This guy does a live stream the last Sunday of every month and a vlog every week. He's got a brand new layout. He's excited about it. Lots of new stuff going on on it. You don't want to miss it. Thank you again for your time, Ray. Appreciate you, Ray. All right, now we're going to head back down under for some Jerry and Roy sightings. It seems like these guys have been uh, terrorizing Australia. Jerry and Roy in Australia? I can't understand it. I know for a fact Jerry's been having folks lay track like crazy over here on my layout. So how's he been in Australia? He, this guy, is a hard worker. He gets it done here. He gets it done there. Now he's doing bloopers and everything else, too. Yeah, I don't know when this guy sleeps. I'll tell you what, he and Sparky ought to hang out a little more. <laughs> you're, you're right. At, at least Roy has that sleeper cab, so he can uh, he can grab a few Z's on his way over to Australia.
I tell you what, it's good to see y'all over there. It's good to see y'all, period. Thank y'all for sending these in. We're glad we found y'all this month. Don't forget to send these guys in. If you've got 18 wheelers, long beds, some kind of form of cab pickup truck with a bed that you can say that Roy S. H. has been driving and it's on your layout and you can get us a picture, please send us that. Also, pickup trucks, that's Jerry. Get us pictures of those on your layout and let's get those to Dale as well. We want to get those. We want to get the photos of your layout with those guys on your layout to Dale so we can promote those guys, Dale, and your layout. <laughs> we know these guys got to be driving all over your layouts. So send the pictures. Everybody's got them on their layout. Let's get some photos into us. The Community Roundhouse page is so simple to use, everybody. The, the description, the, the link is in the description for the Community Roundhouse page, and it's so simple to use, everybody. If you'll just go click there, and then you go get involved. There's another button there. You click that one. Then you go straight to your photos. Click the one you want for us. And we got it. It's that easy. Then we put it in next month's episode and promote your channel. And you support us in the community. And you don't need to have a Dropbox account to do this. You can upload your, uh, your photos and your videos with that one. That's why John took the time to make the page. It's dummy proof for all of us. <laughs> it's easy. You don't need anything. Just go to the website and click to us and we got it. It's safe and secure too. <laughs> it is. And now Jerry's going to come to us with the bloopers. He was in Australia with Roy H. Then he was on my layout having folks helping folks lay track. Now he's in Philly doing bloopers. I don't get it, but John, tell us about this guy. Oh, Jerry's a hardworking guy. In fact, the bloopers that we have this month are all from him. So besides doing all, the, all your track work, flying all over the place, all, all around the world, he's doing bloopers and putting them together. Damn scanner. What is up, my YouTube friends? Whoa, get your finger out of there, Jerry. That's a blooper. I gotta send bloopers into myself. Because you guys aren't sending them in. Come on, guys. I need work. Got to eat. Got to pay the bills. But don't forget, send in some bloopers. Let's not work Jerry too hard. I agree. I tell you what. We appreciate you, Jerry, for all your hard work. But we can't let him do it all, everybody. I make bloopers. You make bloopers. We all make bloopers. Let's try to remember to save them. And let's send them to Jerry. All right. Now it's time for the look ahead. We did the blast from the past with Uncle Wilmer. We did the look back. We did the present day interview. Now it's the look ahead with Go Via or Go Home. And that's Chris. This is Mark's friend from Canada, Eminem Rails. Mark and this guy do a live stream. When is that, John? Uh, that's the last Thursday of the month. That's right. The last Thursday of the month. We got somebody on here that does a live stream the last Thursday of the month. We got somebody on here that does a live stream the last Sunday of the month. We're getting lucky. We got somebody on here that does a live stream every Friday. Uncle Wilmer does a live stream the one Tuesday every month. We got live streams all over the place, John. Yes, we do. <laughs> all right, let's let's take a look at uh, Chris's new layout. He's got a new house, and he's planning a new layout in it. So the overall length from that corner there to there is 18 feet. Doesn't sound like a lot, but um, I'll make it work. And uh, I plan to do a full yard here. It's gonna come out three feet from the wall and it's gonna be right along there. Now from here down to here, this wall here, we're gonna disregard this. That's in the way, I'm not gonna use that at all. Uh, so it's just, it's, I don't know, it's a little shelf thing. I could use it for displaying, but it's going to get covered up. We're not even going to see that. But it's 14 and some odd inches from here to here. Um, this is just the, the back wall, not too much. I'm probably going to come around from here, come out, and then I'm probably going to put a dividing wall 
right down the middle here. As far how far I come out, I don't know yet. But the trains will go around, come down, and then around to the back side and go back and then come up here. Now this whole section here is nine feet long. I plan on doing a loop here to go back. So once the train comes down, it's gonna go in a loop and then it's gonna come back on the second line. Loop around, come back on the other side of the wall and then go back down the main here on the other side of the yard. So there's one track main for going south or whatever and the one track going north and then the one track that's south is going to have the yard attached to it but then there's a separate track and then that's going to come down to here. Now when I get to here from this corner right to the doorway there that's eight feet long. Eight feet. There's a lot I can do with this section but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add a helix. Uh, as for what size yet, I'm not 100%. I know that uh, a 36 inch radius would take up a, a six by six foot um, square, which would, <laughs> I mean, there goes a portion of the room, right? So I might go 20, uh, sorry, 30, 34 inch on the outside and 32 inch on the inside. That way I can do a double track helix and we're going to go up from the main level up a level. On the outside of the radius, it's going to exit and it's going to go along on a second shelf and it's going to go up and around, come down the middle, round back, round the wall there. Then this whole section here, which is a loop, second level up, loop, loop back, second line, second line. Come back this way, loop back, and that way. And there, you gotta remember, there's two tracks, it's two main lines, but one's going one way, one's going the other way. And it's gonna come back, come back, come back, come back to the helix. And it's gonna be on the outside still. It's gonna go up the helix to the third level. <laughs> That's right, probably gonna go three on this one. Uh, and then right across the top of the room, uh, you know, come out, go back in, go around, and it's going to do another loop back. And it's still, it's now it's on its second line. It's going to come out, come back in, but it's up. It's going to go a little parallel, parallel. And now it's on the inside, the inside of the loop. And it's going to downward spiral, spiral on the inside of the loop all the way down to the main level and then back into the yard just like that that's my plan and then we've got the gvo after dark which is at the end of the month it'll be at this location here pretty excited about that so stay tuned uh i'm go go home happy canada day everybody out there in canada and uh you know, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Bye now. Well, we want to thank everybody who did submit uh, clips and photos for this month. We had uh, we had stuff uh, sent in from Ali Chat and Shannon Tapia over in Australia. Of course, we got uh, Chris at Go V or Go Home, and uh, Jerry and Roy, of course, and uh, Brian. Who am I missing? I don't know. I'm just going to say thank you to everybody. That'd be Allie, Shannon, Wilmer. We got um, me. There's Jerry, Mark, Vinny, Ray, John, um, Dale. Uh, Scott uh, Downey. Uh, Scott, uh, James. And thank everybody that's in chat for the premiere. We appreciate you. All right. Before we go, I'd like to apologize to the Lehigh Valley Subdivision. Uh, this is a, this is an awesome layout, Brian. He's, he's just getting started and it looks like a, like a great track plan. And I contacted him and told him that we were going to feature his, his layout in this month. And I'm sorry, but we ran out of time. So we got you first on the list for next month.
I tell you what, I'm looking forward to that one too, because it is something to see. Thanks everybody for coming today and chat as well. Let's not forget next episode, episode eight on Eminem Rails, Eminem Mark's channel, everybody. That's going to be August 12th at 6 p.m. before Sparky over on Mark's channel. And we hope to see everybody there. We'll see y'all there. Don't forget to contribute. Please support this the show. If you like the show, support the show by sending us in a video, sending us in a photo, or better yet, send us an email saying you're okay with us using your stuff on our show, and then we got everything we need. That's all we need from you. Give us permission. Give us photos. Give us videos. We'll promote you. We'll promote. We'll promote the community, and we'll also promote the show. And we'll have some fun doing it. That's right, everybody. That's the point. Y'all take care. We will see y'all next month. Thanks, everybody.